Scientists have recently used NASA's Transitioning Exoplanet Survey Satellite TESS for short, to capture a clear start-to-finish image sequence of an explosive emission of dust, ice and gases during the approach of Comet 46P in late 2018. Mainstream science struggles to explain how these outbursts could occur so suddenly. But could these images instead show a more electrical nature to our comets? The TESS satellite spends nearly a month at a time imaging one portion of the sky, and this allows them to catch a very uniform, long duration exposure. Astronomers were therefore very keen to use this to capture images of approaching comets, and Comet 46P was therefore a prime target when it was at its closest approach in late 2018. Scientists believe comets are large lumps of dust and ice left over from the formation of the solar system. They believe that normal comet activity is driven by sunlight vaporising the ices near the surface of the comet and the outflowing gases dragging dust off to form the coma. Many comets are known to experience temporary, occasional, spontaneous outbursts that can significantly increase the comet's activity. It is currently not known what causes these outbursts, but a number of potential trigger mechanisms have been proposed. Firstly, a thermal vent. Here, a heat wave penetrates into a pocket of highly volatile ices, causing it to rapidly vaporize and produce an explosion of activity. Secondly, a mechanical event. Here, a cliff collapses, exposing fresh ice to direct sunlight, causing a sudden flare up. The brightening event for 46P occurred months before its closest approach. It occurred in two distinct phases, with an hour-long flash followed by a more gradual second stage that continued to grow brighter for another eight hours. The comet then faded over a period of two weeks. So what if we look at this from an electrical perspective? In this concept, the comet is simply just like any other asteroid, but has a different potential to its surrounding. When they approach the Sun, a charge imbalance develops between itself and the Sun, and as the electrical stresses build, discharge takes place forming plasma, which in turn forms a plasma sheath, and this is what we see as the coma and the tail of the comet. If we examine the images closely, there are a number of important points that I noticed. Firstly, the nucleus brightens from a non-black state. More interesting is the fact that the area around the nucleus is surrounded by absolute black. It is clear from the rest of the image that the background noise causes this fluctuation between brighter greys and black, but the nucleus seems to be visible and does not appear to change with the noise and this central part around the comet does not seem to have any noise in it whatsoever. There is also an object that sits in the tail side which appears to move away. Now this could simply be something else moving in the foreground, and these images that we are looking at were taken over a, an approximately nine hour period of time, although it's difficult to pinpoint the exact time because they're not included in the images that they released. Which, you know, it could be a random piece, but it does seem to coincide with exactly where the tails start. Could be coincidence, it may not be. Now the comet then starts to flare when this object leaves the black circle surrounding it. Again, that could also just be coincidence. Initially we see a small tail forming as the nucleus starts to brighten. Then this tail becomes dimmer before brightening again and getting swallowed by the growing coma around the nucleus. Then towards the end, we see another object passing in front of the comet which appears to have dark and then bright patches. And again, this could be purely coincidence. This could be an object that is moving in the foreground that has nothing to do with the comet whatsoever. So what can we make of these events and how can we explain the sudden brightening and then the sudden dimming? It is possible that the dark halo that we see may show plasma discharge in dark mode. The question is whether this would cause the background photons to be absorbed creating a dark halo. 
it is equally possible that this is the extent of the, the comet itself, that the brightening event that we see is purely a discharge on uh, you know, a small part of the surface of the comet. Now it may also be that it is simply a digital artifact produced by the camera. Understanding the type of CCD that they use and its limitations may help us to understand what it is actually capable of capturing. Now it is interesting that both the start of the brightening event and the end are marked by another object moving in front of the image. We have no way of actually being able to tell what distance this occurred at, whether these two objects are close to each other or not, and whether they are close to the comet or not. Now it therefore is possible that another asteroid or some other object with a different charge could trigger the sudden discharge from the comet, and that Another one, again, with a different charge, would discharge the entire comet. It's a highly unlikely scenario because that would require two objects to be passing by this comet. But I do have to point out the coincidence that both the start and the end are marked by these objects in the frame. Now I also find it odd that the leaving one, so the object that passed away towards the end, had these periodic black areas. Now it's unclear what this actually means and it would largely depend on what the CCD is actually capable of measuring. I mean, is the fact that it's black, is that caused by the, the CCD actually being overloaded? That can sometimes happen, but then you end up with, with a dark pixel. And again, the question is, is that dark part similar to the dark halo that we see at the beginning of the image around the comet? I mean, the fact the difference between the two is that in the second one, the thing that's moving across the screen, is that it seems to be turning on and off. Again, it could just be an artifact, could be coincidence, we don't know. Now an alternative concept could be that the comets are triggered into activity by either the fluctuations in the sun's current sheet, and we know that this takes on a sort of wave pattern. So, and we know the angle of the comet as it comes down, it is possible that it's moving in and out at a particular point, and that that could trigger such a spark to occur. Now it is also possible that it's passing near to a planet could cause that temporary increase in the potential difference between the comet and its surroundings. Now when we examine the exact location at the start of the flaring event, we see that it has just crossed Mars orbit, but below it. And obviously Mars is not directly at that point, it's slightly lagging behind. Now if for one minute we assume that our entire solar system is oriented along a giant Birkeland current, could the individual shells that we find within that create boundaries where the charge density would change and therefore a comet passing in and out of these boundaries would experience a greater difference and therefore may temporarily spark into life as it passes through these boundaries? Because again, for me, it's noticeable that it seems to occur at exactly the point that it crosses that radius. Now, obviously, we have no idea what the structure of that Birkeland current would be, nor where that would sit with the planets, and nor where the boundaries of those layers would be. But it is an interesting point that it does happen as it crosses Mars's orbit. Again, could all just be coincidence. So the point would be that as the comet gets closer to the sun, the difference continues to grow, and therefore you wouldn't notice this pulsing as much. So that the, I guess the idea would be that as you cross the individual boundaries of the shells, that it would cause a temporary jump, as the density might be uh, greater at these boundaries than in between. So you would therefore expect to see a pulsing effect on these comets. Now it's not necessarily something we observe, but that could be because as the comet starts to approach the sun, the activity starts to increase, and therefore your, the variations of the fluctuations may not be as noticeable because what predominantly takes over at that stage is the whole coma is, is coming to life. So a small fluctuation in that brightness would not be noticeable because it's already that bright. Now this this may become more evident as we study more comets like this over prolonged periods of time using the test satellite.
As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.